Now that we've created a blog and posted a blog post onto the internet, let's take a look at the settings in our dashboard to help make our blog even more accessible to our students. Before we take a look at the dashboard, I have a couple of housekeeping suggestions. First, when we're using Blogger in Chrome, I always recommend creating shortcuts to the bookmark bar. So we're in the dashboard right now. Go up to the address. You see this little icon to the side. Drag it down to the bookmark bar right there. Now we have an absolute link straight to the dashboard. We can go to the live blog. This is how the blog looks on the internet. We could do the same thing. Drag that icon down. And now we have an absolute link to the blog as it looks on the internet at any given point. One other item uh, to note is that this is the address here for the blog as a whole. And this will show you all of the blog posts uh, in order. You'll have many more once you create a series of blog posts. If you want to give a student the address for a specific post, not the blog in general, then click to the title of the post. And remember, we created an earlier one here, test. And so notice the difference. Here we see the address. It's got the blog post address, but also the specific number and name of the blog post. So there are two addresses, one for the blog as a whole and one for each specific blog post. Now let's take a look at the dashboard. Here I'm going to use my pre-existing blog, the one I've been using since 2011. The default position for the dashboard is the posts section. And here you can see a series of posts that I've made in the past, all arranged chronologically. Very easy to access. Again, each one can be edited, uh, viewed, or deleted. The next section you might use is the comments section, uh, but I have my comments turned off. I don't want to waste a lot of time moderating comments at the bottom of each blog post, so I've turned it off and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. And so therefore this section isn't very important. But if you wish to keep comments on and live under each blog post, this is where you'd go to moderate the comments. From comments, let's go to pages. This is a really interesting section within Blogger, and it really shows the potential for Blogger to be more than just a daily blog post platform. It can be an entire website if you wish, suitable, frankly, for online teaching. These pages are relatively permanent. They provide a consistent set of information that teachers can then offer to their students, uh, and they are meant to be changed only once in a while. They are truly web pages rather than blog posts. I have created a few pages here. My English 10, 11, and 12 pages are, are not yet populated, uh, but I have created a page before called PowerPoint Basics. You can see that it looks very similar to the blog post interface, a very simple kind of word uh, function. Uh, you've got all the tools above that we talked about before. It's written up just like a word processor. You can add things in. Uh, and then you can update it again, just like, in fact, a blog post. Uh, if you go back, uh, you can see that uh, it functions just like a blog post. You can edit them, view them, and delete them. We'll show you how to link from the main blog to these pages in a moment. Uh, but here, I really do think we can see uh, the potential for Blogger as a much more meaningful educational platform. And by the way, I've only created three pages for my three courses, but if each page gets too long, and you usually you don't want uh, students scrolling more than say three pages at a time, then feel free to create more pages, uh, one for each unit within a course. If you're really concerned about the overall look of your blog, one of the first places you should go is theme. So here you'll see dozens of templates, and some of them are quite striking. Some are better suited for pictures, others are better suited for text. Try them out, take a look at all of them, and of course each one can be modified as well. Once you've chosen your theme, and we by default at the beginning chose simple, uh, you can modify it even further. Go to customize. You've got all your options here. You can adjust widths, uh, background, uh, other things like layout as well here. You can apply it to your blog. 
Uh, I'm going to go back to Blogger because I'm fine with my theme. And uh, definitely take a look at this. Set it up early. You don't want to actually go back too late uh, because often your text will have to be reformatted. But this is a fun part of Blogger. So spend some time with it near the beginning of your blogging experience. The second to last section I want to show you is uh, settings. Uh, there are, are many settings. You can go look through them. They're fairly intuitive. Uh, the couple that I want to point out are under the basic subsection here. Uh, here you again can change your title. Uh, you can add other authors, for example, another teacher or student teacher. Under posts and comments and sharing, uh, you usually will see this starting here at embedded. That's the default position under comments. I chose hide because I don't want to deal with comments under each blog post. It just saves a lot of hassle. So once you've chosen uh, your particular settings, you go to save settings as usual and you're done. The final section I want to show you is the layout. Now this is the layout of my pre-existing blog. And here you see a basic schematic layout of your blog. Uh, your theme template will give you the layout, but you can modify it anytime you wish. Google starts you with a nav bar gadget at the top. It looks kind of pretty, I suppose, uh, but this Google Blogger nav bar is, to me, superfluous, so I turn it off and I save. So you're left with the header, which is now at the top every time you log into your blog. And again, you can edit it. Uh, you can change the uh, blog title, add some description, add graphics if you so wish. On the left side, you have your blog post section. You can pretty well just leave it the way it is. On the right side, you have some room for imagination. Here you can bring in gadgets. Gadgets are little pieces of pre-built code that add functionality to your blog. So just click add a gadget. And Blogger currently has 26 different gadgets. And if you take a look through them, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one of the most important is pages. So pages, if you click there, it will be added here and you can move these around. Pages is the gadget that allows you to link to the web pages we were talking about earlier. So it turns uh, your blog from a mirror blog to a website pretty quickly. I have other link gadgets that link out to outside sources, outside web addresses. Uh, I even have a stats gadget, which is kind of fun. It counts the number of views per day. Overall, this layout section is fairly intuitive. Uh, you can figure it out on your own, and it really does help you fine tune the look and shape of your blog. So I hope you found this introduction to the Blogger dashboard helpful. If you know how to use your dashboard and all of the various features, you can really unleash the power of Blogger. Again, I think Blogger is a wonderful educational platform for teachers. Uh, it's very easy to scale it up and down. You can make it a daily blog, but you can turn it into a full-fledged website as well. And it can get out a lot of information to your students uh, without having them be trained on some sort of special software. At the same time, you don't require any infrastructure. As long as you've got a, uh, a link to the web, you're going to be able to work on Blogger. And of course, in the end, it's also free. So try it out. I think you'll be happy with the results.